Hello my friends, some of you people might consider this video today boring. Some of you might find it interesting, but I've decided to do a vlog today. I'm often asked what causes the wheels to squeal when you hear the trains coming by. And I can't really explain that without getting into a rail car design. And I'll make a stab at it. Here's a short example of what I mean by wheel squeals. You hear it all the time in the curves. In the 35 years that I worked for the railroad, I definitely learned a lot, especially since one of my jobs was repairing and changing wheels and things like that on rail cars. So I know a bit about it, even if I might not be able to properly explain it here on YouTube. I spent a couple hours using Microsoft Paint and created a new folder here on my computer. And we'll go through it a little bit. If you listen long enough, you might learn a thing or two from me. And you might get a few laughs, especially at my Microsoft Paint artwork. When you see a train going by, whether it's a box car, tank car, whatever, you see uh, wheels under both ends of the car. Each section of wheels on each end is referred to as a set of trucks. All right, let's take a look at a set of trucks. A set of trucks, I borrowed a diagram from one of the National Safety Transportation Board sites. This is a set of trucks that would be under one end of each rail car. And they vary in design somewhat, but the basic principle is the same on all of them. You have two truck sides, that's this long piece across here, that fit down over the adapters that carry the weight on the roller bearings of the axle. Wheels vary, they can be anywhere from 28 inches to 36 inches, the most common one in uh, circumference, or diameter I mean. You have a truck bolster, that's this piece that goes across here and joins your two truck sides together. They have a bowl in the middle of it, has a recessed lip about a couple inches deep that the center plate fits down in. I'll show you a center plate here in a minute. But the weight of your entire load, whether it's a box car, tank car, piggyback, whatever, is carried in the center of the two rails concentrated in this bowl right here. The center plate actually fits down in there and it has a center pin. I'll show you a center pin. It sticks up in a hole into the bottom of your uh, body bolster. So as this trucks are coming down the rail, the only thing that steers them is these flanges right here on each end. The flanges hug the inside of the rail and keep it on the track and it also steers the trucks. Now if you have a load that's off balance not loaded properly, loaded heavy on one side, some of your weight will get on these side bearings over here and it's not supposed to. I mean occasionally some weight does get on them when a car is rocking back and forth or a tank car for example has got a product inside sloshing back and forth. It's where your truck springs come in handy. They, they uh, compensate for the rocking back and forth and still keep your weight of your car in the center of the rail. If all the weight was to get distributed to the outside, well the other side could raise up and get off the track and that's what we call as train wrecks. More than once I've had to send uh, loads back to a customer simply because they weren't loaded properly. One of the jobs of a car inspector is to make sure loads are loaded level and even. Every once in a while you get a product like cement or some kind of grain that's been loaded too heavy on one side or an open top load that's loaded too heavy on one side. You can compensate with an open top load by putting counterweights on the other side to level the load. I've seen them do that too, but I'll get to that at another time. Right now we're concentrating on what causes the wheel squeal. I'm going to stop here and we're going to go into looking at the real car designer. Now all cars have a backbone, all rail cars have a backbone, uh, much, as, much the same as a ship has a keel, a person has a backbone, each rail car has a backbone. 
and that is known as a center seal, draft seal, whatever you want to call it. Here's an example of one I drew with my Microsoft Art. It's a heavy duty steel center beam. Runs from one end of the car to the other. And it can vary on different designs, new engineered device ways, come out with intermodal and stuff, but it's still all the same principle. You have a backbone to that train. So here's your center seal with a coupler on both ends. And you can just see the body bolster here and here with a center plate on it that's going to rest in the bowl of the the center plate's going to rest in the bowl on the truck bolster and carry the weight. And let's take a look at the center seal bottom view. Center seal bottom view with center plates attached. We're looking at the bottom of the car looking up. Now you got ribs and other things in here that, that are not demonstrated here. And my art ain't the best in the world. But your center plate is bolted to the bottom of the body bolster on both ends of the car. Those center plates fit in the bowl on the trucks. All right, looking at the side view of a box car, for example, the center seal runs full length to the car. You see your body bolsters and your center plates right here. Couplers on each end. This bottom portion is what be known as a side seal on a box car. Now let's look at the, the end of a car. Say I'm leaning over, looking under the car. Here's your couplers right here. As I look under the car, I see the truck bolster that runs through the, connects the two truck sides. Center plate is resting right here in the bowl on top of the bolster. If you look under that coupler and you see a gap on both sides of the side bearings over here, that's pretty well level. If you look under there, and there's no gap between the side bearing, its shims, and the side bearing on top of the bolster. There's a problem. Uh, sometimes it can be touching on one side, but you got to have clearance at least on one side. If both of them are touching, it's what's known as hard down on the side bearings. These new intermodals have constant contact side bearings, and they touch all the time. It has a neoprene plastic type insert, and they, the trucks won't pivot as good. They don't get properly lubricated or whatever. There's lube pads you have to put in this center plate bowl to make it pivot properly in the curves and maintenance is not done like it should be. So if you look under there and you see a gap, there's a, it's okay. Look, the load is probably level in there. It's okay to go. No gap, you got a problem. I'm going to end the video here. And let me know if you think this video is of interest to any of you, if you want to know any more about rail cars. But my video is getting too long. I'm going to stop at this point. Thanks for watching, my friends.